All right, you're watching superscum.com. I'm Chris. I'm here with Ollie from Camelot. So you're a few dates into this North American tour with Nightwish. How's the tour going so far? Yeah, fantastic. I mean, uh, we had very few uh, support spots in the past, so uh, we didn't really know what to expect, you know, not being a headliner for once. And uh, But the reception is, is just outstanding, you know. It's, every night was so far great, and, uh, well, I hope it goes on like that. Even if we have some, some problems with uh, uh, cold uh, going on on the bus, you know, our singer is a little bit sick at the moment and still the, the audience is, wow. October 30th, uh, your new album, Silverthorn, will be released in North America, and it marks the first album featuring Tommy Karavik on vocals. How did, the reporting, uh, how did the recording process go for the album, and what does Tommy bring to the band? Well, uh, Tommy wrote all the lyrics, all the uh, main vocal melodies, you know, with a few corrections from, from our side, from, uh, from the songwriter's perspective. So we were also not so sure how it would go. And um, we met personally a lot in, uh, in the US in, and in Germany, at my place and uh, at Thomas Youngblood's place. And uh, so it was a very intense writing period. Um, and in actually uh, quite a short period, we managed to write, in my opinion, one of the best albums I've made in my, in my musical career. So how did the uh, search process go that ultimately led to Tommy joining Camelot? Um, we auditioned about, I think it was about 800 uh, singers in, uh, in two years. So, I mean, people sent in videos and MP3s. And uh, so, um, of course, you, you could already at the, at the beginning say, Good, this guy is maybe a great singer, but uh, he doesn't his style doesn't fit Camelot or the other way around or whatever so in the end were maybe five six uh, singers left which we had to choose from and um, we sent out a ballad which is now also also on uh, Silver Thorn it's called a uh, song for Julie it's a ballad and um, Tommy uh, Tommy Karavik sent back his recording and that was mind-blowing and basically that that was the decision and in the, in the end so you've uh, already released the first single, Sacrimony, Angel of Afterlife, um, from the upcoming album, Silverthorn. Uh, when can fans uh, expect to see the video released, and how has their reaction been to the song? Um, the, the reactions are so far really positive. Um, there, we were also not sure, you know, how many uh, fans of Roy Khan, our old singer, would be like kind of anti anti Tommy but it's it's like there's almost nobody out there commenting in a negative way like on on, on YouTube and uh, all these channels so really happy about that the video um, is done and um, I think in the next uh, weeks days and weeks it should be should be on the internet on this tour how many new songs are you including in your set um, so far we play uh, Sacramony every night and um, in where, 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 Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh we played song for Jolie in a piano vocal version for the first time. But that's it so far. On the European tour, which is coming up in uh, November, we're going to play at least like three, four new songs when the album is out then. So in 2011, uh, Khan retired from music and Camelot um, had to finish a North American tour with Fabio Leone on vocals. Uh, how was the atmosphere of that tour, and how are things between the band and Khan now? Well, um, the, the first U.S. tour before the tour with Fabio was actually canceled back then because uh, Roy called us like two weeks before the tour. Everything was arranged, the support bands were already in the U.S., the, the crew w was there. So that came as a total surprise, and we had we flew in Michael Eriksson from uh, Circus Maximus, but in the rehearsal room we felt already, you know, didn't feel right. So we canceled the tour. We only played uh, Proc Power, and then one year later we went on tour with Fabio Leone, which was a uh, yeah very success successful, and um, uh, we actually don't have any contact with Roy. Um, he withdrew into privacy, like he uh, shut down all communications and uh, we had to look forward, you know, we had to work on a new sketch, we had to work on a new album, find a new singer, there was so much to do in the past year, uh, two years and um, so far, well, I can't tell you how Roy is. 
So 2012 marks the 20th anniversary of Camelot as a band. Uh, are there any special plans, tours, or releases to mark the anniversary? Um, actually, what what first it's Silverthorn now. It's all about this album, you know, to promote it and um, to to. There's going to be more dates in the U.S. for sure. We're looking to going over to Japan. Um, so a lot of promo and, but I think. We're gonna do something special, uh, but uh, well, we're talking about that on the bus a lot. It's prepared months before, so I can't really tell you right now what's uh, what we have in mind. Silverthorn is a concept album. Uh, were there any specific challenges with carrying a single concept over the course of an entire album? Yeah, mainly the sequence of the songs, and um, be because you talk about the, the flow of, of of the tension within the album anyway a lot, even if it's not a concept album. So if you have a concept and you have to bring the, the songs into a certain sequence to fit the story, um, you have to think way ahead about that, which makes it more complicated, but also a, a great channel, challenge, especially also on the um, side of doing the orchestrations, which I did, um, is that to, to adapt that to the story is, well, it's really something special, but it's also uh, more time consuming. It takes a longer period to to correct something if, if I feel, okay, that doesn't fit the story really. It's a little bit like writing film music. The same when I do that, I have to think uh, in, in, the same, in the same patterns. Once Silverthorn's released in North America, can the fans here expect to see Camelot on a headlining tour? We're working on that, yeah. So what does the future hold for Camelot? Well, um, I would say that uh, that crucial period uh, with Roy leaving the band and, and going through this transformation is not yet finished. So we're still in that, but we're very positive about the future, about the reception of Tommy and stuff. So um, I'm super excited, um, and I hope that, that we can just uh, go to the step up to the next level uh, within the next months. And um, well, yeah. So far, it's, uh, it's everything, all the signs are positive. I hope it's, it, stays, it stays like that. So this is your time. Uh, is there any advice you want to give out to anybody or any message you want to send to your fans? Um, well, I just, I'm, I'm just very, very um, grateful that you guys stay on board, you know, that you supported us like this during the very heavy uh, two years. Um, and, well, so far I can see, especially from the U.S. audience, um, how supportive you are and uh, every night was a blast for us so far and I just hope you um, yeah we stay a, a big Camelot family like like it is right now you know it feels feels great and everybody in the band um, thanks you for that so horns up from my side and from whole Camelot. I'd like to thank Ollie and Camelot for their time you've been watching superscum.com. <laughs>